like God done for real blessed me for real for That's real. True. Like, he done took his time on me, like really blessed me, like gave me all the gifts that I can even imagine. Right. So I'm like, if I don't, if I don't do my part, like to the fullest that I can do it, I'm talking about work hard, right? Like yeah. give it everything I got. I feel like I'm cheating him. Mm. I feel like. I feel like I'm I'm letting him down. Like I'm cheating him. If I don't if, if I don't develop all the gifts he done given me into into like elite skills and be one of the best, I'm cheating. Him. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Keeps Hot Takes. On today's show, I got my guy Ruff from Time Out Sports. Ruff, how you doing today, man? Doing pretty good, Chief. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. All right, so to kick off today's show, Ruff, we're going to talk about Coach Prime and Colorado starting off 2-0. and So how, how impressed are you with their 2-0 and start so far? Very impressed, man. You know, nobody had these expectations for them. Uh, when you talk about being 1-11 last year, uh, having to have a pretty much a roster overhaul, uh, bringing in a whole lot of new talent, a whole lot of new coaches, you know, it's, it's been very impressive what they were able to do, beating a team that lost in the national championship game. Uh, Shador Sanders has been amazing, uh, proving that he is that guy. And it's not just, you know, oh, he was in the, playing for HBCU and against lesser talent. No, he's that guy. He really has the tools and the ability to be special. Uh, Travis Hunter is a playmaker on both sides of the ball. Uh you know, he's going to be a first-round pick, and I think he'll have a solid NFL career. So I've been very impressed by the uh, Colorado football team. We know what Coach Prime represents. Uh, he brings pedigree. He brings, uh, you know, just somebody that people can relate to. He's, he's seen, clearly he's able to get the best out of his players, out of his coaching staff. So I'm excited to see, you know, how the rest of the season goes for Colorado. Yes, sir, I agree with you. Because like you said, the first game, surprisingly, they were 20-point dogs. I don't know uh, why people weren't giving them much of a chance. And they go in there and, like you said, beat the uh, running runner-up for the national championship game in a shootout. It was a high-scoring game. Shador threw for over 500 yards. Uh, you know, he was spreading it out to his weapons. He had four guys that had over 100 yards uh, receiving yards. So that was impressive. And then uh, the game this past Saturday, you know, they kind of started off slow in the first half. Shador was getting sacked. They were putting a lot of pressure on him. And then in that second half, you know, they really stepped on the gas and really pulled away from Nebraska. So I've been very impressed uh, as well. And I, I'm really excited because, you know, they have some big tests uh, coming up. I know Saturday they played their in-state rival, Colorado State. College game day is going to be there. You know, it's going to be crazy, the atmosphere and all that. And then after that, they got they go to Oregon, and then they have a big home game at the end of September against USC and probably the Heisman favorite right now, Caleb Williams. So uh, I, I can't wait for both of those games to see, you know, how good Colorado is. I don't know about you, but I feel like if they're going to, you know, compete with those two teams, they're going to have to find their running game because as I look here, uh, they haven't had more than 60 yards in either of their games so far. And they've rushed it over 30 times, so they're not getting a lot of push off the ball when they run the ball. So I think it'd be, you know, to give them the best shot of upsetting both of those teams, I think they need to be balanced and not have it where Shador is doing so much passing the ball because teams can really just peel their ears back and, you know, really rush after uh, Shador and get after him, stuff like that. But I'm very impressed so far. He has all the, He has a lot of weapons. He don't just really focus on one guy. He spreads it out to a bunch of guys. So, like you said, I can't wait to see what the rest of the season has in store for them. And, you know, we'll see once they, you know, start stepping into conference play and playing some tougher teams. And, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully, you know, see if they can make it to the Pac-12 championship game and beyond. So, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do the rest of the season. Yeah, it's very important to be able to, you know, be able to be successful in multiple facets. You can't be one-dimensional in sports. You know, even when they're talking about basketball, if you're a guy that plays all offense, no defense, or you're a team that has a whole lot of people that play offense but don't play defense, at some point you got to be able to get a stop. And so when you're talking about football, like you said, they're going to definitely need to get that running game going. 
also defensively, the run defense is going to have to pick it up. I mean, they've been just poor in that area. Um, and Shiloh, Shiloh Sanders, Deion, Coach Prime soon, he's going to have to pick it up, man. He's going to have to make these tackles and take better angles uh, because he's got some plays out there on the field. Yeah, so that's something I was going to bring up with you. I, I feel like they need to be much better on defense because we know Oregon and USC can score the ball. So, uh, Shallow, like you said, he needs to take, take some better angles because he's missed a bunch of tackles in both the games so far because you can't do that against Oregon and USC because they'll put 50 and 60 on your head if you're not careful. And I think they need to get a lot more pressure on the quarterback. Uh, that's something they haven't been able to do well in these first two games. Uh, so that's something that they'll need to find. And I think once Deion starts recruiting those guys on the offense and defensive line, I think Colorado will be able to take that next step and be like a national contender and all that. So we have to see if they can find that this season or they'll need to hit the recruiting trail and the transfer portal to get some guys that can really get out there in the trenches. Now we're going to talk about a Winston State Rams. So before we do that, let's go ahead and drop the Ramley only intro. And then when we get back, we'll talk about Winston State football. 21, can you do something for me? 21. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to Ramley Only. And on today's uh, segment of Ramley Only, we're going to talk about can West Ham State football turn it around after a f fourth straight 0-2 start to start the season? So, Ruff, um, <laughs> how are you feeling after these first two games? Me, uh, me personally, I feel a lot different than the past <laughs> three years when we started 0-2. Uh, especially last year, you know, our quarterback play was was really – it was a merry-go-round at quarterback. I think we played like six quarterbacks or something like that last year. We really struggled oh, to man. find that consistent quarterback uh, play, consistent quarterback that could, you know, lead us down the field. We had a bunch of turnovers. Uh, but this year we got a freshman quarterback who I think is really special. I'm very high on Dalen Lee. He's 6'4". Uh, we saw it a lot Saturday. Uh, we finally have a vertical passing game. I feel like that's something that's been missing because we had the weapons before. We just never had a quarterback that could, could, you know, get the ball down the field. I was so happy to see Chad Turner, you know, Saturday involving him back in offense. He transferred from Jackson State. Uh, he's just a speed demon. You know, you want to let him get behind the defense. And that's what he did on that 52-yard touchdown pass. Uh, some things that I said we need to clean up. Uh, penalties, you know, we have penalties at the worst times. Like Saturday when we were trying to get the ball back to our offense, the defense couldn't get that one stop that they needed to get the offense, the ball back. After the offense cut the lead to six, they had a stupid, unsportsmanlike penalty. So we just got to be smarter. Uh, another thing I said, we need to clean up the offense. I feel like we had a lot of sloppy play Saturday, a lot of drops. We weren't finishing drives because we were moving the ball on them pretty well, and then something would always stall our draw our, our drives out uh, Saturday. Um, and I I think we need to find our running game again because if you have twenty six rush attempts for twenty five yards, that is not good. Uh, so we're not we're not uh, moving people off the ball. I think we need to you know hit that sled this week and practice and you know practice pushing people off the ball, opening some holes for our running backs. Uh, and the turnovers Saturday, they were just – they really hurt us. You know, we had a fumble down in the red zone. We were about to move it in to try to cut into their lead. Uh, we had an interception at the end of the first half. And I think we had – I think we had two fumbles and we had an interception at the end of the first half. I really won't – you know, I don't think the interception hurt us as much as the two fumbles uh, from Asa Barnes and uh, Hester – because we were moving the ball on Ohio Dominican, and then those just killed those drives because we had so many chances to win that game Saturday. And then for, you know, our offense uh, to just, you know, have those mistakes, it just really hurt us, and we could have got a big win on our resume. And uh, we'll talk more about the game Saturday, but I'll let you uh, chime in here. Do you think West Ham State can turn their season around? Man, I hope so. It's uh... – one of those things, man, you know, when State of State football program used to be legit. It used to be something people could get excited about. And here lately, it's just not been that. Um, 
and like you said, a fourth straight 0 and two star. It just can't happen. Um, you got a lot to clean up, man. You got like you said, penalties are key. Winston Salem State does not have enough of a talent of, of talent to overcome those mistakes. You got to play clean. You got to play smart. Some of the penalties are just ridiculous, you know. And and I'm not afraid to step out here and say it. Justin Fleming is is a is, you know I ain't say a friend of mine because I don't really know him that well, but you know. I got a lot of respect for him. We follow each other. You know, I post when he does well, but in that penalty, when he had that penalty, you can't you can't have it. You know, if you're gonna be successful, uh, and and get a win on the board, we gotta be smarter, man. We really do. Like you said, the running back, they gotta they gotta find some holes, man, and make some things happen. Uh, that was that was just not gonna get it done what we had on Saturday. So you know, I'm hoping they can turn it around. Uh, two games down, got got a good amount left to go, but. You got to start this week. You know, you got you got to make make something happen this week because you don't want to keep losing. The more you lose, the more defeated they end up getting. So, and mentally, once you've lost the battle, you're done. Yes, sir. And I'm looking forward to Saturday's game because it's going to be a revenge game for us. Because last year we were up ten nothing on Elizabeth City going into halftime, and then we just absolutely collapsed like we did a lot last year. We couldn't finish games off. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it Saturday, uh, 6 o'clock, the home opener. I'm hoping the stands are filled with Ram fans, cheering loud, you know, bringing back that old atmosphere we had in Bowman Gray. Um, so uh, like you said, uh, I, I definitely think we need to be smarter. Um, and I, I like how we. it seemed like we, you know, in the transfer portal, we added some receiver depth. And then, you know, we brought back some guys. So I'm really excited about that. And I liked how we got the two turnovers Saturday. That was good. Um, we we got a touchdown drive off one, and then the other one happened at the end of the first half. So we weren't able to do much with that. But hopefully we're able to, you know, get more turnovers and get more pressure on the quarterback and we're able to not let teams move the ball up and down the field on us like they have been doing these first two weeks. Uh, so I'm excited. Uh, the next four games we got Elizabeth City, Elizabeth City Saturday, and then we play Bluefield State at home. Then we go to Lincoln, and then we got uh, Livingstone. So we got some winnable games coming up. So hopefully, like you said, we're able to turn it around. Yeah, man, I say this too. If we're not able to turn it around, there should be a new signal caller, head coach, or offensive coordinator. Yeah. <laughs> head coach for sure. You know, I, I'm just I'm just sorry. It's just too many years that we just look like product is not what it needs to be. And so that's where I'm at with it. So hopefully they can turn it around. I guess we have to see. Yes, sir. One thing I like about our new offensive coordinator, Chris Barnett, it seems like we're, you know, running a lot of stuff that we weren't running before. Like I've seen us run jet sweeps. Uh, we did like a reverse pass Saturday that got called back for a penalty. But, you know, just seeing him seem like he's opening up the offense a lot more than it was before. It seemed like we were just run heavy and leaning on a run game. But it seems like he's trying to open things up more. So I'm hoping that they can produce some W's because I like this new offense that we seem to be running. So let's start Let's start uh, off predicting our NFL games, talking about our Thursday night game. We got the Minnesota Vikings at the Philadelphia Eagles. So, Ruff, how do you see this uh, Thursday night game playing out? Well, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on it because, for one, kind of game where it was just added to the injury report for Philly. And with the way they used him, like he was, you know, that guy. In week one, it's, that'll hurt. That, that'll hurt their game plan if he's not able to go. Uh, DeAndre Swift is too good a player not to be getting touches. Not to be getting. Uh, I mean, I think he ended up with two. two what I, I, I don't think? know the exact number. Yeah, like under five yeah. carries for sure, and like two targets. That, that's the difference. DeAndre Swift is better in football than him dang well, and I can't be convinced otherwise. So, when you look at that game, Minnesota, uh, Minnesota lost the game, but they should not have lost. Um, so I think. It's going to be a close one. I think they'll try to come back and get a win. But I don't know if they're going to be able to overcome Philly because Philly didn't play well either. They escaped. And so I know they're looking at film right now and they're saying, well, there's a lot of things that we can do better. Uh, where is this game going to be played at? At Philadelphia. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with Philly. I'm going to go with Philly 26 23. Okay. I, I, I also expect it to be a lot closer than when they played last year on Monday Night Football. And I have Philadelphia winning as well. Um, yeah, like you said, I was shocked that Swift didn't get a lot of touches. I was expecting him to be like their number one back because uh, he's so dynamic. When he stays healthy, you can do so much with him. Uh, so I was just shocked that, you know, they barely used him uh, Sunday against the Patriots. And like you said, they escaped pretty much. Because when they got up 16 uh, nothing, I know I had tweeted out they may need a running clock in this game because <laughs> that's just how it looked, you know, when they, the way they started that game out, looked like they was going to, you know, walk the dogs on the Patriots. And then they kind of let off the gas and let the Patriots get back in that game. And they were really sloppy the rest of the game. And luckily, the that Patriots receiver, he couldn't, you know, find the uh, – couldn't find his feet in bounds on those – uh, catches or they probably would have beat Philly the way they were moving the ball on Philly's defense. So uh, I'm expecting Kirk Cousins not to have the bad mistakes like he had last year against Philly. I know he, he has some horrible interceptions where you, you're, you're like, who are you throwing through? What are you looking for? Uh, hopefully, you know, Jordan Addison can be that second receiver for them this week against a Philly secondary who you can kind of, you got to be selective about who you try. I wouldn't try Big play slay because you like like we saw uh Sunday he, he will take a pick back. Uh but I'm expecting Philly's pass rush to be a little too much for the Vikings late. I think like you said, I think it'll come down to a field goal, uh Philly walk it off or something like that. Uh but I I think the difference will be Philly's defensive line late in the game getting pressure on Kirk Cousins because the Vikings really don't have a good offensive line. And I was shocked that they lost that game to the Bucks, who I thought were going to be one of the worst teams in the league. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. But just to see that Justin Jefferson only got two targets in that second half, that was, that was surprising. I don't know why they went away from Justin Jefferson because he was just cooking in that first half. But I expect Jalen Hurts and that offense to play a lot better because uh, they really didn't, you know, put a good product out, out on the field Sunday. So I'm expecting them to clean things up. Uh, I know they hate it because they had a late game Sunday, and now they got to, to prepare for the Vikings on a short week. Uh, so we'll have to see how they look coming off a very short week, having to travel home and get ready for a game. But I expect them to play a lot better. I know it's going to be rocking at the link. All right, next we got the Green Bay Packers at the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I was not expecting the Packers to dominate the Bears like they did. Uh, Sunday, that one really surprised me. Jordan Love looked really good. Uh, I got to take the Packers in this matchup because the Falcons, if the Panthers didn't give them that game Sunday, I, I don't know if they would have won that game because Desmond Ritter, he has two uh, elite – well, I wouldn't say elite, but he has two really good receivers that he doesn't get the ball to, and it's crazy. He didn't get the ball to Kyle Pitts still late. You got two receivers who are 6'4 and taller, and they do a lot of, you know, pond fishing and, you know, short passes and stuff like that. When you got those two tall receivers, I would air it out a lot more, throw it deep. And I I just don't know if they're going to, you know, be able to fix that by Sunday. So I got to go with the Packers, who look really good. Jordan Love, he looked really good spreading it out to his weapons. Desmond Ritter is the reason why I can't pick the pack. I mean, the Falcons, I just don't trust him. Uh, Jesse Bates, that was a big pickup for the Falcons defense. He had some interceptions. He had a, he forced a fumble. He was all over the place. So Jordan Love definitely needs to watch out for him. But I got the Packers in this matchup. Yeah, I'm in the brands. I was impressed in week one by Jordan Love. Thought he, thought he did a lot of good things. Um, yeah, I think Packers is just a better team. Uh, the Falcons are not going to be good at all this year. Uh, Desmond Ritter's terrible. Um, <laughs> Kyle Pitts and, like you said, Drake London are, are ballers. But if you don't have somebody that can get them the ball, and obviously the play call is not really good either. If you don't have those two things working together for you, you have an issue. So we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. I think the Falcons will win this game by probably six and seven points. And uh, it'll be one that I won't be watching. <laughs> oh my uh and one thing uh to follow up on, on what you were saying i hope the packers are able to find their run game to take some pressure off of jordan love i, I feel like that's something they can do better 
at uh, going into week two. So hopefully Aaron Jones, I know they were stretching them out. So hopefully it was just cramps Sunday, and hopefully they're able to find that run game to take a little pressure off their uh, quarterback who's starting for the first time. All right, next we got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Buffalo Bills, who just suffered a horrible loss last night. Um, after Aaron Rodgers uh, completely, he suffered a complete tear of his Achilles. Uh, this was a game that Buffalo had no business losing. I don't know if they lost focus after Aaron Rodgers got hurt or what, uh, but that was just a horrible loss for them. So I'm expecting them to bounce back at home, play a lot better. I know Vegas, they, they got an ugly win in Denver. Uh, Russell Wilson barely had uh, – he, he – he didn't even get 200 yards passing, so that was just a really ugly game. I'm expecting Buffalo to play a lot better at home. It's going to be rocking. And, yeah, I think they want to get that bad, embarrassing uh, taste out of their mouth from last night losing to the Jets. Yeah, I'm in a grand. I think the Buffalo will uh, – they're about to back. Um, Josh Allen is going to obviously have to play a whole lot better. I mean, some of – and sometimes, you know, you make mistakes, you have interceptions where it's a great defensive play. And then other times, you just have boneheaded plays by the quarterback. And that's what Josh Allen was doing last night. It was six stuff last night. Are you even thinking? <laughs> Is that? I mean, it was it was utterly ridiculous. So, you know, I think that I think that Buffalo will get on back on the track uh, in game two. I think Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen will have, uh, you know, the same level of success. Um, and then they'll also be able to get more out of uh, their tight ends. I think they could have used Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox a little bit more than they did. Uh, but exactly. then again, when you turn the ball over where that you are, you don't even have the ball much. So, yeah, I think uh, Buffalo wins. Uh, Oakland has question marks with Las Vegas. Yeah, Las Vegas, right? Yeah. They have mm-hmm. question marks. Um, Vontae Adams, you know, he was kind of quiet in game one going up against Sertan. Um, so, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. But I'm going to go with Buffalo bouncing back, too, because if they don't, it's going to be a whole lot of upset fans for real. If they go up the whole two, it's going to be a lot of upset fans. Yeah, uh, I just hope Josh Allen just doesn't throw Hail Marys for no reason. Because <laughs> uh, right. them, them turnovers were just re- ridiculous that he had last night. So, uh, like you said, I'm expecting Buffalo to bounce back uh, or they're going to have some angry fans when coaches fired like you were talking with Coach Massey <laughs> from Winston State. State. Uh, so we shall see. Our next one is the Baltimore Ravens traveling to the Cincinnati Bengals. Who I don't even know what that was Sunday, uh, the way the Bengals looked. Uh, you would have thought they had their third string offense in <laughs> with how bad they looked. But uh, salute to the Browns. Uh, they got a new defensive coordinator, and uh, that you know they really got off to Joe Burrow in that offense. I didn't look at the game personally, but I knew I know Joe Burrow only had 82 passing yards, and uh, that's not Joe Burrow. So uh, the, the Ravens have a bunch of injuries that I'm not sure they're going to overcome. They're going to be able to overcome, I should say. Uh, hopefully, they get Mark Andrews back. Uh, but I'm expecting the Bengals to bounce back at home. Uh, because they got a really bad taste in their mouth uh, getting embarrassed by their in-state rival. So I'm expecting them at home in a very close – it could turn into a shootout potentially maybe, uh, bounce back against their division rival. Uh, I thought it was very impressive uh, how uh, Zay Flowers uh, for Baltimore looked. Uh, I think he's going to be their top dog at receiver. I know Odell really didn't give them much. I saw he had like two catches, I think, for like 25 yards or something like that. Um, so Baltimore, J.K. Dobbins, unfortunately, he got hurt again. He just can't catch a break. I'm praying for him because uh, I know this is just tough. Uh, so I am I got Cincy back, bouncing back after just a no-show in week one pretty much. Yeah, I'm in the green, so I'm going with Cincinnati to bounce back because, just like you said, with Buffalo, you know, they have high expectations. I mean, what, what, they, what they put on the field in week one, it wasn't just very severe the world. Uh, I mean, you might as well head left Joe Burrow out and let him take a week or two off again to start playing. Like, that, was just, <laughs> that was embarrassing. Um, so I think they get back on track. Uh, I'm looking for Joe Mixon to have more impact. You know, I'm, I'm a guy that used to think he was a lot better than he is. You know, his production here lately has not been up to par. 
Um, and that's why he – one of the reasons why he was not able to command a big contract. Uh, you know, he kind of had to take a pay cut. Um, but, yeah, Cincinnati, uh, they really need to win this game. Like you said, Baltimore, like you said, uh, Mark Andrews, is he going to be able to play? Because, you know, he's one of their best weapons or the best weapon on their team uh, when it comes to receiving the ball. And um, so I think it's going to be a close game. Um, like you said, I think that uh, – Cincinnati finds a way to bounce back, though, and, uh, you know, burn the tape for game one. Next, we got the Seattle Seahawks visiting the Detroit Lions, who are coming off a huge upset over over the defending Super Bowl champs, largely because the Chiefs receivers uh, had butterfingers and couldn't catch the ball. Uh, I was very disappointed and shocked to see that Seattle laid an egg in week one against the Rams. I was expecting them to kind of be up there with the uh, 49ers uh, for that division title because I think the Cardinals are going to be horrible. I don't know if they'll win four games this year. I wasn't expecting a lot from the Rams with Cooper Cup being down for the first four games. Uh, so I was shocked to see the way they went in there to Seattle and just did a demolition job on Seattle. Uh, but I'm expecting the Lions to continue their momentum. They look really good on both sides of the ball. I'm expecting them to, in their home opener, they want to keep this momentum going. Jerry Goff will spread out to his weapons. And that defense, especially in the back end, I think they're going to want to make another statement. And uh, they have the challenge of trying to slow down DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and uh, J Jason Smith and Jigba Smith. Uh, so we shall see how they deal with this challenge because Seattle has a talented uh, trio of receivers. So – I'm going to take Detroit at home. I think, like I said, they want to continue their momentum from game one and try to get them a little roll here. Ruff, how do you see this one playing out? We're going with Detroit as well. I was impressed by what they, what they were able to do in week one. Uh, we know that offensively they have a lot of skilled players that are effective, um, and Jamison Williams is not even there. Uh, but – um, defense was the question mark for them coming into the season. So they look, you know, solid in that game one uh, on defense. And uh, as a result, I think they'll be able to compound on it in week two and, and get a close victory against the Seattle Seahawks. Next, we got the Los Angeles Chargers at the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Chargers, that game with Miami, that was very entertaining. Uh, it was back and forth. It was a shootout. Uh, but they, they came up on the short end in that one. I'm expecting them to go into Tennessee, who was in an ugly game with the Saints. I didn't watch the game. I just saw the score, and it looked like they, it was uh, an ugly product that both teams were putting on the field. Defensive struggle. I saw Tannehill. He was kind of struggling getting DeAndre Hopkins the ball. I don't know if D-Hop's going to be too happy with that. But I think the Chargers, uh, hopefully their defense shows up this week. Uh, cause they were just getting toasted by Tyreek Hill. He had 211 yards, so I know they want to bounce back after the Dolphins did whatever they wanted to them in that game this past Sunday. I'm expecting the Chargers to go on the road. I know Tennessee; they'll probably want to, you know, grind it out, lean on Derrick Henry, probably, you know, keep the Chargers' offense on the sideline. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee tries to, you know, play keep away. Uh, but I think the Chargers will find a way to win. On the road, I'm going with the Chargers as well. Um, like you said, week one they struggled a lot on defense, uh, but I think they'll be able to get back on track this week because we know in Tennessee they don't have any weapons uh, in the same ballpark as the Tyree Hill. Um, and I think that Ryan Tanner Hill, if he doesn't tighten his game up, he's going to be very bad to start. He looked terrible in week one, um, so. I'm in the I'm in agreement. I'm going with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers ultimately. Um, probably by seven, honestly. All right. Uh, so next we got the Chicago Bears at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I was shocked that the Bucks pulled off that upset at Minnesota. Ruff, how do you see this game? Do you think the Bears will bounce back, <clears throat> or will the Bucks go to two and up? Bears and Bucks. That's one of them that's a toss up for me because I don't think either team is good. Um, I, but I'm gonna go with the Bears. I, I actually don't think that they're gonna be able to kind of run the ball and neutralize, you know, 
uh, not necessarily neutralize because it's not like the Bucks are explosive, but you know, shorten the game, uh, find ways for Justin Fields to make some plays with his legs, and uh, I think in the end, Baker Mayfield is due for a mistake, and so I'm going with the Bears. I have the Bears winning as well because I had high expectations for the Bears once they acquired DJ Moore, who pretty much got shut down by Jair Alexander last week, and that's no shame in that. He's one of the best corners in the league. But I'm expecting them to look a lot better this week at Tampa. I expect Justin Fields to hopefully his line can protect them a, a lot better than they did Sunday, and I'm hoping, you know, like you said, they can get the run game going. Hopefully he's able to get DJ Moore some touches, and they're able to look like the Bears team that I thought that they were going to look like this year because they didn't show up at home week one against their rival. That was really disappointing to see how they kind of just fell apart in that game, and the Packers really took it to them. So like you said, I'm expecting them to bounce back this week and kind of get back on track. Next we got our game of the week, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kansas City Chiefs, they're expected to have Travis Kelsey back this week. We really don't know if they're going to have Chris Jones back this week. He just signed his contract yesterday, so we don't know if he'll be in game shape and ready to go by Sunday. But since he signed it yesterday, I think that gives him a great shot to be there. I think the Chiefs are going to need him to be on the field Sunday because the Jacksonville Jaguars have a very explosive offense that he got even more explosive adding Calvin Ridley after he was suspended last year for gambling. Uh, so I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm expecting them to bounce back at home. I mean, on the road. Uh, I just like the other two teams, the Bills and the Bengals. I don't think they can afford to go to zero and two like the other two teams. Chiefs and Jaguars. I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. Um, like you said, Chris Jones. I expect him to be on the field because he was at the game for game one. Um, and so I'm expecting him to be on the field and. You know, have impact. They're gonna need him to neutralize uh, Travis Etienne. Um, and the Chiefs offense is going to have to find somebody that can make plays. You know, it'll be big for them if Kelsey is back, uh, because he's a safety blanket for uh, Patrick Mahomes. But uh, if I'm the Chiefs, I'm looking for some wide receivers. I'm trying to see if Julio Jones is <laughs> willing to sign or uh, Jarvis Landry. You know, I'm just calling around looking to see if we can get some people that. Are shorthanded because Kadir is telling what he did on last week was embarrassing. So, but I think the Chiefs find a way, like you said. I don't think they have to. I think they could overcome on zero and two, but I definitely don't think they want to. So, I think they win a close game, high scoring probably. Yes. Uh, like you said, Travis Ethan, they're going to need to have Chris Jones on the field to limit him. So, I think that's going to be big to have him on the field and hopefully they can get some better receiver play. We got a battle of our two rookie quarterbacks. Uh, we got the Indianapolis Colts go- traveling to the Houston Texans. So, Ruff, how do you see the, the matchup of our rookie quarterbacks playing out? We got Anthony Richards for the Colts and C.J. Stroud, who both suffered losses in week one. So, how, who do you see coming out in this uh, matchup of rookie quarterbacks? Uh, that's going to be uh, intriguing for me. Um, I think that C.J. Stroud is the better player currently. Um but I think the Colts have the better team. Uh, Anthony Richardson did get shaken up last week, though. And so, I, you know, they say he think he's going to be okay, but I need to see because I want to pick the Colts. But if he's going to be compromised, I think the test can steal this game. Uh, the Colts have, you know, Michael Pittman Jr., who's a good player, Josh Downs, who was able to do some things uh, in the slot. Uh, so if Richardson is, you know, not compromised due to injury, and I guess we'll see what they say over the next couple of days, and I'm going to pick the Colts to win. I, I, I'm going to go against you on this one. I, I'm picking the Texans uh, because, like you said, C.J. Stroud, he's the better of the two quarterbacks, um, and he has some nice weapons on offense. I think it was just too much of a tall task for them to go on the road, his first start, go into Baltimore and beat the Ravens, who have high expectations. Uh, so I think at home, a divisional game against a team that they, they're kind of, it's a toss up between the two teams that are right there neck and neck. Uh, I got to go with the team who I think has a better quarterback and I, that's CJ Stroud. I expect him to get the ball to tank Dale a lot. Uh, like you said, on the other side, uh, Anthony Richards, he has some nice weapons and Josh Downs, 
Michael Pittman, he had a big game. Uh, so we just have to see if Anthony Richardson is going to play with that up in the air. Uh, also, I, that's another reason why I'm taking the Texans to win this game. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So next we got the San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Rams. It was very impressive what the 49ers went into Pittsburgh and did. I was not expecting them to go into Pittsburgh and just demolish the Steelers like that. I had questions about their secondary, and that's why I thought this game would be a lot closer than it was Sunday, because Pittsburgh has a nice receiving core if Pittman can get, I mean, if Pickett can get the ball to his receiver. So I was just shocked that you know they went into Pittsburgh and did that demolition drop job on the Steelers, and then I was shocked that the Rams went into Seattle like we talked about earlier, went into Seattle and did a demolition job on the Seattle Seahawks pretty much. Uh, so. I got the 49ers going on the road. Uh, that defense is no joke. Uh, I expect them to get out to Matthew Stafford. I don't think the Rams will have as much success on offense as they did week one. Seattle, their defense is, I, I would say, okay, mi middle of the pack. But now they're going up against a top three defense. And I'm expecting Nick Bosa and that defense to get after them all game long. And I think that'll be the difference uh, for the 49ers. The Rams won't have Cooper Cup. And I just don't know if Stafford will be able to, you know, trust those receivers and they'll be able to get open or if he'll have the time to to get the ball to those receivers because I think that defensive line is really going to get out there Stafford because his offensive line I don't think is that great. And I think it'll show in the game like this. Yeah, I agree. 49 is just a much better team. They have a complete roster. Uh, I think they're going to be able to suffocate Matthew Stafford in the Rams offense. And uh, they want to be up by probably 17 points in the fourth. And then the Rams will be just going to hold out a pass and maybe try to be 10, but I think the 49ers will win by about 10 points. Next game, uh, two teams. Uh, well, the, we'll start with the Giants. They're traveling to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I know they're pretty disappointed in how they looked week one, getting shut out 40 to nothing at home against their division rival, the Dallas Cowboys. Rough. The Cardinals kind of gave your commanders a tougher game than most people expected. So do the Giants back back bounce back this week after getting embar embarrassed at home by their division arrival? Or do the Cardinals get a home victory here? How do you see this one playing out? I think the Giants won this game. I think that they'll be able to take better uh, care of the football. Uh, I think Darren Waller would be more of a factor. Um, Saquon. Um, they just got, you know, they ran up against a great defense in the Cowboys and they were just not able to overcome it. It's like they just got punched in the mouth and they ended up going to sleep after. Right so <laughs> I think they beat the Cardinals. The Cardinals are on a good team. And the only reason why they were in the game was against us is because we had suffering 50 turnovers, uh, three for that matter, uh, fumbles, interceptions, just all of the above. So I think the Giants are able to win this game uh, against an a inferior team. I do as well. I expect the Giants to bounce back. Um, I think that they may sneak into that wild card, you know, back of the NFC uh, playoff pitcher. Uh, it starts this week. Like you said, they got an inferior opponent. I expect Daniel Jones to look a, a lot better this week. You'll have uh, m a lot more time this week for, sh for sure. I don't expect the Cardinals to be able to get out to him like the Cowboys did last week. And like you said, he he's got some speed demons, Paris Campbell, Hyatt out of Tennessee. Um, so I'm expecting the Giants to look a lot better. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they'll be pretty fired up to, you know, get that bad taste out their mouth. So I got the Giants as well. Next, we got the New York Jets at the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know about you, but with Aaron Rodgers uh, suffering a complete tear of his Achilles, uh, I lost a lot of excitement that I had for this game. A lot of that went out the window. Now that we'll be going up against Zach Wilson. Uh, but I will say that Jets defense is for real, especially their front seven. You know, they, they're they very deep at, on the defensive line. They got some very good linebackers. They got some good corners. Uh, Sauce Gardner, he's one of the best corners in the league. So I think this will be a much uh, – I feel like this will be an upgrade of a challenge for the Cowboys offense uh, because they pretty much did whatever they wanted to the Giants defense. But – I think the Jets' defense will really test them. They'll put some pressure on Dak. Um, I think the 
the key is for the Cowboys defense is to get pressure on Zach Wilson because as we saw last night, the Jets offensive line is kind of iffy suspect. Um, so I think they need to get pressure on Zach Wilson. And I think that's the key because he does have some weapons. If he has time, I think he could make things interesting. But I'm expecting Mike, Micah and our deep defensive line to really get out to Zach Wilson and cause some more turnovers this week. And I got the Cowboys. I think it'll be pretty close. And I think the Jets' defense will kind of keep them in the game. They'll make it ugly, low scoring. But I got the Cowboys winning their home opener. Yeah, I think the uh, Cowboys win this game also. The Jets' defense is good, but uh, Dallas has the weapons to where they should be able to still do some things. Um, and when you talk about Dallas' defense going to get Zach Wilson and the thing with Hackett, who was awful. Uh, I just don't think it's a fair fight. The Dallas Cowboys should be uh, dominating that game. In fourth quarter, they should be, you know, really able to sit the starters and, and be looking forward to week three. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some more things out of the Cowboys' offense this week because uh, they didn't have to do a lot last week. I'm expecting Brandon Cook to get a lot more touches. Um, but I liked how they were, you know, did a lot of creative things, putting Turpin in the backfield, giving them tosses and jet sweeps and all that. So I'm excited to see what else, you know, they unveil this week. Um, and you just got to find 95, Quentin Williams and uh, Johnson coming off the edge. You got to, you know, block those guys and give that time. But I'm I'm not expecting, you know, the special teams and the defense to spot them all those points like they did last week. Uh, so I'm expecting the Cowboys offense to be able to show us a little more Dak will be able to throw for a lot more yards than he did last week, so I'm excited for that. Ruff, uh, next we got your team, the Washington Commanders. Will they go into Denver and make it 2-0 against the Denver Broncos, or do you see the Broncos bouncing back at home? How do you see that one playing out? That's a tough one, man. I think that Sam Howell could be compromised. I think he is honestly perfect. Uh, And as a result, of that, that hurts our offense and our chances. Um, Terry Lauren, I don't believe, is 100%. Uh, I think that they possibly should have sat him in week one, at least let him come back in week two or three. Uh, so, you know, my my heart wants to say the commanders are going to win, and my head tells me that uh, Denver will win a close game um, at home. And so, you know, we'll see. I hope I'm wrong about it. Like I said, this is one I won't mind being wrong about, but you know, my job here is not to be biased, and I choose to do this just to say what I feel. And I think Denver, uh, as we are currently constructing, is just a little bit better. Yeah, um, I agree with you. I, I I really wanted to pick Sam Howell and the Washington Commanders because, you know, I'm a big Sam Howell fan. He played in North Carolina, um, but like you said, I just can't see Denver starting 0 2 at home under Sean Payton. Uh, I expect him to be very aggressive. Uh, take a lot of chances, really get after it Sunday because uh, he knows that his team really can't afford to start 0-2, especially with how bad Denver looked uh, last year. I'm expecting for Russell Wilson to throw for more than 177 passing yards uh, this week. So, like you said, I'm expecting Denver to bounce back. Sam Howe, he, he took some pretty big shots Sunday. So, what's his status going to be for Sunday? That's another thing that we can't predict here on the Tuesday. So I think I'm going to be safe and I'm going to pick Denver as much as I want to take Sam Howe and the Washington Commanders. So next we got our Sunday night game, the Miami Dolphins at the New England Patriots. Whoo, that Dolphins offense, uh, they're explosive. They got a lot of speed. Uh, they can attack you in so many ways. But the biggest threat on that offense is Tyreek Hill, who had 211 receiving yards like we talked about earlier. Uh, he just lit up that Chargers secondary. I'm intrigued to see what Bill Belichick tries to do to take away Tyreek Hill. Uh, but if you take Tyreek Hill away, you got another speed demon on the other side and Jalen Waddle. Uh, so I'm taking the Dolphins. Uh, I think the page, I think the Patriots, you know, with uh, Brian Billick uh, calling the plays again, they look much better on offense than they did last year when they had two defensive guys calling their plays. They had a defensive guy and a special teams guy calling their plays, which I don't know what they were thinking. Mac Jones looks a lot better. Um, 
His receivers showed up. He threw for 350 yards. That was impressive. Uh, but I think, like the Dolphins Sunday, late in the game, I think this is going to be a close game. And late in the game against that Dolphins defense, their defensive line closed the show. And I think they'll do it again Sunday in Foxborough. Ruff, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I agree. It's not a fair fight. I think the Miami Dolphins have a very talented team and have a good roster overall. And that two uh, and the Tyreek Hill connection is looking strong. Um, so I think they'll continue to score the ball at a high level and they'll be able to neutralize the offense for the Patriots. And so I'm predicting that the Dolphins win this game fairly uh, comfortably, you know, maybe by 10 or so. Okay. Uh, and I think if if Tua can stay healthy, I think this Dolphins team is going to be a team that nobody wants to see in that AFC playoffs. But Tua, hopefully he can stay healthy because, you know, he's very fragile and he seems to get hurt a lot. So I'm just hoping that Tua can stay healthy because this Miami team, you know, they look like they're going to be a threat. You know, Jalen Ramsey is supposed to come back late in the season. So this Miami team is a team that I wouldn't want to see, uh, especially if they can make the playoffs and Tua can stay healthy. They're dangerous and they're scary. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, like last year, the second week of the season, we're going to have two Monday night games. Our first one is the New Orleans Saints at the Carolina Panthers. I am taking the Carolina Panthers. I am expecting them to play a lot better. I'm expecting them not to be as sloppy. You know, they had all those turnovers. They gave the game to the Falcons. Uh, so I'm expecting the Panthers to win a close game at home. Uh, Bryce Young, I'm expecting him to look a lot better in his home debut. Uh, and you know, the Saints, they're going to really try to, you know, get after Bryce Young, lean on that defense, and probably try to make this game ugly as possible. But I got Bryce Young winning this game. Ruff, how about you? I'm going the opposite of you, man. I'm going to the Saints. I just think they had the better team. Uh, Michael Thomas, the third six and that. Uh, he looked pretty good in game one. Uh, Chris Olave, we know, is a weapon. Uh, you know, I I just think that uh, the Saints are going to have too much for the Panthers. Jamal Williams, I expect him to be more effective with his carry. You know, he had a lot of week one usage, but he didn't do nothing with it. Um, and so the Panthers just don't have enough weapons either. Uh, you got Bryce Young, but when you look at their receivers, it's, it's, it's leaving a lot to be desired. Adam Thielen is getting up there in age. Uh, he's not the player he was three, you know, two to three years ago even. Um, and so I think that the Saints will win this game and uh, start off season two or zero. Right, yeah. And to close out the show, uh, we got the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Ralph, do the Steelers bounce back at home this week or do they go 0 and 2? How do you see this one playing out? Going well, with the Cleveland Browns, I think that Deshaun Watson will play a lot better than he did on week one. Uh, Amari Cooper can do better. Uh, Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb. I think he'll be able to find some success on the ground. Uh, I just don't like what I've seen from Pittsburgh. I think that Kenny Pickett is an overrated quarterback. I'm not a fan. Uh, I think that their wide receiver core is good, but it's compromised now because Deontay Johnson, who is one of the most reliable guys they have, you know, he's not necessarily going to make the big, big plays, the, you know, the highlight plays, but he's consistent and uh, he's going to be out. I don't know if you saw that he's going to miss oh, yeah, a couple of weeks. So I think that uh, they're going to struggle again offensively, and I think that Deshaun Watson is going to be able to do some things they need to and uh, lead the Browns to win. Yeah, I just have too much questions, too many questions about this Pittsburgh team, especially on the offensive end. Um, so I got to go with the Browns as well. Uh, I, I just don't know what, what's going on with this Steelers offense. Like you said, you know, they have some pretty decent weapons on that offense. Uh, I don't know why they didn't want to get the ball to uh, pick it, you know, because he, he, he's a dog. You know, you see, you know, highlights of him doing ridiculous catches in camp and, you know, for whatever reason, they're not, they're not able to get him the ball. Uh, I expect him to keep this game a lot closer than their week one game. But like you said, I expect Deshaun Watson to look a lot better. And I expect him to lean on Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper, and hopefully he shows up on the road. Uh, and I expect Cleveland to go on the road and get a big, get their second divisional win. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Ruff, I want to thank you for uh, joining the show, my guy. You want to tell people where they can uh, follow you on all your platforms? Yeah, uh, Time Out Sports uh, podcast can be found uh, Spotify and iTunes. Right now we're in transition. 
um, you know, trying to decide what I'm going to do next. I might have this a decision or an announcement uh, by the end of the week or early next week. Uh, but, you know, regardless, you know, we can be found there. If you want to look up old episodes, we can be found on Twitter at Time Out Sports 3. Uh, that's where we post all sports content. Uh, either we run polls, uh, you know, all type of stuff. So just follow us there and interact with us. Uh, Instagram is Time Out Sports with two underscores. And then also, if you are a fan of the WNBA, uh, and you know you like to see what the ladies have on going to the games. You know the fashionable looks. And follow uh, the WNBA League Fits page that I run uh, and created. Uh, it can be found on Instagram at WNBA League Fits, and on Twitter is Fits underscore WNBA. I uh, make sure to tap in with me on all those platforms, and uh, also follow us on Facebook. Time I switch back on Facebook. I'm pretty happy about this. Uh, we're at 24,000 and some change followers, so I'm hoping to hit 25,000, uh, you know, very soon. So, so tap in with us there also, and uh, just keep on supporting, man. Just keep on supporting my guy Keith uh, and everything he does. And they don't take anything for you to retweet him when he drops a new podcast. You know, stuff like that is, is free. And uh, if we don't do it for each other, then nobody else will. So uh, keep out. Appreciate you sending the invite for me to come on the show. And, uh, you know, when I can, I will. And uh, look forward to this great week two games. Yes, sir. Uh, my guy, I want you to keep up the good work. Um, I appreciate the kind words. And I'm looking forward to that, to that announcement when it drops. And, you know, I'll be ready to celebrate you, my guy. Um, so, once again, thank you for coming on the show. And I agree with you. I'm hoping we get some good week two games. No blowouts, as you like to say. <laughs> Yeah, blowouts ruin the fun, man. Injuries and blowouts are the two things I say just ruin sports. So hopefully we get some good competitive games and also WNBA playoffs. Oh, yeah, that's about Gotta to start. Shout it out. WNBA playoffs start tomorrow night. Make sure to tap in. I'm happy about it. And I'm happy that ESPN was able to get uh, their issues resolved. When they were, it wasn't necessarily them, but Disney and Spectrum were able to get stuff resolved. So now ESPN is back for Spectrum users. And so, yeah, make sure you tap into the WNBA playoffs tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, you'll see some good basketball, man. You really will. So, like I said, I appreciate you for having me on, Keith, and uh, take care. All right, you too, man. All the push and didn't know where to go. Cross the street with my dog, yeah, the wall. Being me made it harder to grow. Still went up, got my feet out of the flow. Gonna wanna been waving. But I always been playing it low. Getting that work on the daily.